Okay, welcome back to Statistics. This is Dr. Kling. Today I want to talk about confidence intervals and p-values. And for the only time in this whole course, I'm going to deliberately use the wrong interpretation of, uh, at least in classical t statistics, and I'm going to talk about the probability that mu is equal to mu naught or some or or that mu is in a range so normally we stick mu naught in the middle and we look at our x bar and we compare x bar to mu mu naught okay now i'm going to just because it's easier to explain the relationship between confidence intervals and p-values this way, I'm going to do this the wrong way. I'm going to put x bar in the middle, and I'm going to put mu naught, let's say, oh, I'll put it over here. Okay. All right, so let's say x bar is 10. Let's say we have a 90% confidence interval that goes from 8 to 12. So that's 90% confidence interval. And let's say the mu naught is 7. Okay, so <coughs> what we could ask is what's the probability that mu naught is correct. Again, that's a, not a good question in classical statistics, but we could, let's pretend we can ask it. What can we say about the probability that mu naught is 7 is true? Well, we know that there's a 90% chance that it's between 8 and 12, and presumably that means there's a 5% chance that it's greater than 12, and a 5% chance that's less than 8 so that the probability that mu naught is less than or equal to 7 is uh, less than 0.05 right because we only have 5% on the right 5% on the left so we know it's less than 5% so if the null hypothesis is mu equals 7 and the alternative is mu is greater than 7, we can reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is going to be less than 0.05. So that's how we can, so it's very easy to explain the relationship between a confidence interval and a p-value if we pretend that we can make a probability statement about the parameter. Uh, because basically if you're, if the, per, if the null hypothesis falls within the confidence interval, then the p-value uh, is going to be high, um, so that if, if we're talking about a 90% confidence interval, the p-value will be greater than 0.05. If the null hypothesis value is outside the confidence interval, then the p-value is going to be low because the confidence interval includes the 90%, and so the probability that the parameter uh, is outside the confidence interval is going to be small. So it, again, if mu naught is within typically a 90% confidence interval, then p-value will be high and we will fail to reject. Okay, and if mu naught is not within 90% confidence interval, p value will tend to be low, and we can reject the null hypothesis. So that's the way in which uh, confidence intervals and p-values are kind of numerically related. It's sort of if you're 
if you're outside the co confidence interval, then you have have to have a low p-value. The p-value is uh, is kind of what's a, what's left over after the confidence interval. If that makes any sense. If you have a 90% confidence interval, then there's going to be five percent on either side, and so we're at that uh, magic point. We want to uh, reject the null hypothesis. Um, so again, it's very easy to understand if we talk about the probability of the parameter being someplace. If there's a 90% chance that it's between 8 and 12, then there's less than a 10% chance that it's not between 8 and 12. And so that's, um, you know, so that's how we can, you know, if we, if we're, if we know that it, a confidence interval tells us what range it's in, a null hypothesis is about a particular value. If the particular value is not in the range, then it has a low probability of being that value. Again, we're not allowed to say that, so we have to talk about this very indirectly. Um, we have to talk about the probability of observing our x-bar if the null hypothesis were true. And that makes it a little harder to uh, describe the relationship between confidence intervals and p-values, but from now on, uh, let's say that um, from now on, don't make probability statements about the, the parameter, but we can stick to these, these true, this relationship, that if the null hypothesis is within the confidence interval, you typically will fail to reject. If it's not within the confidence interval, then you can reject. And that's all I want to say about that.